So uh, any questions? If no, I, the last topic of this semester is one I want to go through cryogenic qubit readout, right? Uh, you can be, uh, you mostly is for the integrated uh, spin qubit or charge qubit, silicon qubit in this case, not superconducting qubit. So what do we do? But they use the same uh, theory. Where is the slide here? Uh, let's look at this paper. My goal is to go over some basics of the paper. And now some of you may laugh at me because I know you ha we have an RF expert here. So uh, if I say something wrong, let me know. But I will just start from the basic because I'm good in teaching this because I learned from scratch as you also. So I may know that what you don't know. So I will try to emphasize the main points. So he said that he, they have developed a cryogenic bulk band sub 1 dB NF CMOS low, low noise amplifier for quantum application, right? So let's look at each of them. What is cryogenic? Now you know, right? For low temperature. What is bulk band? It means the bandwidth is large enough to handle the signal, right? And what is sub 1 dB NF noise uh, figure, right? So what is 1 dB, for example, right? You, you guy already designing the transistor, uh, your LNA. So again, what is noise figure? It's just the signal to noise ratio. Yeah, in the input, divided by signal to noise, noise ratio at the output, right? It basically telling us how much additional noise the amplifier add to the signal. Right, but what is the meaning of one dB? Right, if you forgot I, this one, you need to very familiar with this. But uh, I I also cannot convert it well, so I will go with the equation. You saying one dB? I also know is that's ten log, right? S N R in. I mean, what what I showed you earlier. Some people call it noise factor, and dB is noise figure. Right. So basically, you think that in terms of power ratio in the lumber, right, signal to noise ratio, equals to 10 to the power 1 over 10. OK, because 1 over 10, right? And then take 10 to the power, right? And this give me about 1.268. It means it adds about 26% of noise. I mean, it degrades the signal to noise ratio by about 26%. If it is 1 dB. So 1 dB means less than 1, right? What is the best that you can have, theoretically? 1 what? You mean this is 1. Yeah. Then in terms of dB, what is that? 0 dB. Yeah. So if you can get some 1 dB, that is very good. Am I wrong or something? <laughs> oh, okay. They they might have noise temperature in the paper. It's just they put it in the title. source uh, distance noise temperature scale to that time. The noise temperatures are more accurate. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, so so he's saying this is something we have been discussing, right? Uh, we all the noise figure will refer to the uh, source for KTRS, right? So if you don't do it well, it can become meaningless, right? So yeah, so that's why sometimes they use noise temperature. But yeah, but okay, good. Okay, so now, without reading the paper, at least now we kind of know what this paper is about, right? After reading the title. Before that, let's look at a few things. This is from another paper. So here shows how people uh, read the quantum qubit now. So here uh, is a qubit. And what you see is that you have a matching network, which is just a resonator. This one, if you look down, is supposed to be, let's say, 50 ohm. 
So at room temperature, you have this all, all very complicated RF circuit. You have RF source, uh, and then you do something with a phase shifter, and then you have attenuator, which I think I mentioned before, that you reduce the thermal noise uh, to low enough before you go to this uh, qubit, uh, quantum bit, right? So if you don't have this qubit, if this is matching well, then you basically will have uh, zero refraction because let's say 50 ohm and then you see 50 ohm, everything just go, right? It won't refract. But when you have a qubit, depend on, depending on its state, it will change the resonance frequency of this circuit. And this is called cross curve. It's going to pull the frequency. And then as a result, so here I forgot exactly what this is, but we don't need to go into detail. You try to just show that uh, they are stable because they design something so that even given the process variation, they can control this resonance frequency well. But the main point is here. In most of the, uh, in most of the frequency, in every other frequency, you have a very large refraction because it doesn't match the uh, impedance, right? It's not 50 ohm. Only a certain frequency, depending what you put for CS and what you put for CM, you get to almost zero, negative 40 dB. It means like 10 to the power four, lower power, right? It's a 0 .00, 0 0.001 percent of the total power. Is that right? Yeah. When you match well, theoretically, if you match perfectly, there's no refraction. You can get. You should go to negative infinity because loss zero is negative infinity, right? But basically, it is like this. So you should have pulse to here again from room temperature to cryogenic at five Kelvin, and then if the qubit is at zero, maybe right, it's going to shift the resonance frequency to one frequency. Let's say maybe. It's not in this graph, but let's say, for example, it is uh, 200 megahertz. But if this is one, it may shift to 250 megahertz. So if you should oppose to here, based on the refraction, you will know that whether it is a zero or one state. And the reason is that you have this cross curve. And again, we have a cryogenic LNA here using 3.5 to help to uh, amplify the signal. Yeah. So that RF pulse will be like your. Yes, you use RF pulse to interrogate the qubit. It's just like the bat, right? They use the sound wave to know whether there's something in front of it. If the qubit is like, if you have wall in front of you, or you don't have a wall in front of you, that is exactly what it is doing. If you receive feedback, then okay, it collapsed to having a wall in front of you. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not to that detail. Uh, which slide is this? Now, so of course this is not good, just a reminder, or this is another paper. Now, currently, most of the uh, system is that we have the classical computer, high-speed digital circuit, like here, all this thing. Right, even for this one already, although I only see the RF source, but actually I actually need to have a shape the pulse that I need. And actually that needs some high speed digital circuit to do op, uh, arbitrary wave generation. So you generate a Gaussian pulse uh, with certain shape to uh, have the maximum benefits of reading high, highest fidelity, right? So they are done on the digital. And then you go through coaxial cable attenuator, we just mentioned filter to reach the quantum processor. So this is slow, one is slow. Second is you bring the thermal noise to there, right? So, uh, which is not good, right? So many people, I mean, the company, right? Like you guys are doing already is try to put everything at the low temperature. So classical computer may be a bulky one still at room temperature. But then you go through this high-speed I.O., we will do all this uh, control, including the arbitrary waveform generation or whatever, at 3 to 4 Kelvin. Then you go through this superconducting 
wire when you superconducting then it means that it is uh it does not dissipate any energy right uh does not no resistance no resistance then no noise right uh just like for example niobium right is superconductor when it is less than 10 kelvin so this is this can be easily achieved so that is the idea right Reduce the system complexity, reduce run chip, and improve the overall fidelity because you also reduce the noise. Okay, so that is one of the future uh, idea, but no one really have done any good system about this yet, right? If I'm correct. So, for example, this paper, right? JSSC, of course, is a very prestigious uh, journal. They even, although they show this, but they just to show that why they are. Uh, controller is uh, important. They can dissipate less than two milliwatts. They don't actually have the whole quantum computer, of course, right? I don't know. I forgot the maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they need to check. So, and then another thing is the low noise amplifier. Now mostly it's discrete, and this is also used for superconducting qubit, what I showed you earlier, right? So we won't go into the detail, but I want to remind you something. It is from this paper. It has three stages. Why is that? Uh, of course, one thing is, again, to even re reduce more noise. First, uh, you can have a lower gain at the first stage, right? But another reason is that you might have, right, the first stage you want to have input matching and then lower noise, your gain may be slow, small. But have three stage is because maybe this is the gain of the first stage, this is the gain of the second stage, this is the gain of the first stage. And then overall, I have a relatively flat gain with a very wide band. Okay, that's why they have three stages. And what I want to show you is this hemp. Do you remember this one? Indium aluminum arsenide barrier, indium gallium arsenide channel, indium aluminum arsenide buffer. This is the hem we learned earlier. But maybe you forgot, but which one has a wider band gap? Smaller atom has wider band gap or larger atom? Smaller, okay. So this one is Y band, yeah, right? This one is small band gap. And that's why you have the 2D electron gas. Do you remember all this thing? We confine the 2D electron gas and we use this cap barrier to top it or based on polarized, here is probably not polarization doping, but you dope the barrier, then your electron is then the channel. You don't have Coulomb scattering because the, carry, the donor are far away. You have very high mobility. Why we need high mobility? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you want to have a high mobility? Okay. And also the frequency response right, the FT, right? So you have a larger mobility that will uh, help the FT because what is FT? FT is, yeah, transit frequency. About this, right, GM divided the CGS and GM really related to the mobility. So you have high mobility, you have a high FT, right? And also uh, noise probably is less, you have less Coulomb scattering. Right, so if you amplify this, you get this, right? So this is just what we learned earlier. I, again, I don't require you to learn all the detail, but if someone present you a hemp, see, this is hemp we learned before. I hope that you can understand what's going on. Do not feel that it's just a completely monster that you have not seen, right? You first thing already know that I have a 2D EG, very high mobility. Even maybe you forgot exactly what it is. It's just high mobility, no doping, no Coulomb scattering, very good for, uh, at no, low noise, good for amplification, particularly at low temperature, there's no doping freeze out. Uh, 
in this case, right? Another thing I want to bring your attention to is the design. This is the gate. And this is called mushroom structure or T-shaped gate. The gate length is only this. This is LG. The gate length. Uh, I don't know, maybe about uh, 80 nanometer, right? Because here, here you see that this is uh, 200. So this may be about 80 something, I don't know, or 60. Very short. Uh, this is an old paper, 2018, right? Why we have this one? This is more than why on top of you I have such a big metal. This is the metal, right? Any idea? Yeah, this is a part of the gate. Why don't I just have this part? Why I want to have this part running over? What is the benefit of a larger metal? Remember, this is a cross section. Very good. This is a cross section. We are basically seeing this. We are basically seeing this one, right? And then I have source, I have drain, and then here you have the gate, and then you have very big T-shaped gate running like this. You see what I mean, right? So why do it? Because he said we have a smaller resistance, right? Still remember the gate resistance is very important that would degrade the FT, uh, extrinsic FT, right? If you re I don't require to remember, but we did, did talk about intrinsic and extrinsic, right? What your ham really have, and then all those uh, parasitic can reduce the overall FT, right? So this is called mushroom shape. But having a larger gate, what will be the problem? Capacitance will increase also, right? And that's why uh, you have a lot big in, uh, isolation to reduce the capacitance. We will make it thicker, right? So this is the micrograph of the structure, and you can see clearly where is the input, where is the output. I just want to tell you that the input has this, free terminal. Ground, signal ground. G is not gate. This is ground. Why? Because this is high frequency. So we need coaxial cable or transmission line. So we need to uh, have at least have this ground signal ground comes in. And then here you see that uh, something lead to this. Uh, I think this is inductor or capacitor. Maybe capacitor. I don't know. This is capacitor, this is coupling cap, right? And then here you have this inductor, this is inductor, right? And this is the transistor, which is very wide. I think this is the gate, the width of the, yeah, I, I cannot read it, but that is uh, what you have, okay? When you do the layer, okay? <laughs> Maybe I will just stop here, then I continue next time. Uh, Tomorrow I will send a spreadsheet and but probably you don't need that. I just randomly pick it. Everyone present in the on the same date uh, for your project. Okay. <laughs>